In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to skew both a background and a video image to create a very interesting effect. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you how to create something like this yourself. First thing we're going to do is work on our background. So I have this image I took. It's just a shot of part of a simple bank statement. It's very boring, but we're going to do a couple of interesting things with it. I'm going to click on it and click on the Edit button. And then I need to click on the Advanced button. So I'll click on that. And one of the things I want to do is change the way in which I see this. The default is Fit. I'm going to click on the down arrow by fit and change it to 75%. And if you look carefully, this is the background that we will see on the screen. So what I want to do is actually make this larger. And in order to see the background, I'm going to take the opacity and dial it back just a little bit until I see that black rectangle. So what I'm going to do is skew it. Now to skew things, you take these little blue nodes that you see only in the advanced area and you drag them. I'm going to drag this one up and we'll take the other one, we'll drag this one down. And so we're making this kind of look angled three dimensional. It's a little bigger than what I want or need. So I'm going to actually make it smaller and move it over here. Make sure we totally cover the area that's black and it fully covers it. I'm good. So now we'll turn our opacity value back up to 100% and click on OK. The other thing I want to do is I want to change this and change the time of it. It's only a second long. So I'll click on here and change it to, let's say, 11 seconds and zero frames. Just type the numbers in and click on OK. So now I have my background. Now the second thing I want to do is take the image of a vehicle. The video of vehicle on the road will take this video I happen to have, drag it on a new track. Now what I like on the new version of PowerDirector, it creates tracks as you need them. You notice it wasn't there before. So I need to find approximately the frame where I will find that vehicle right about here. Now you can use the period key to move forward a frame, the comma key to move back. I like that. We'll start there. So with that frame as our start, I'll click on it and do control T to split it. And we'll take the first part. We'll simply delete it. We'll remove it. And then I need to move ahead until it gets out of frame. And here again, I'm going to use the comma key and the period key. If I keep using the comma key, it's going to move it back just about to where I want it. I'll do control T again to split it. We'll delete the back half. I don't need that. So we're going to put it all visible on the screen and drag it back to the start. The other thing I want to do in this case, if I click on it, I'll right click and click on unlinked video and audio. This has audio. I don't want the audio. It might mess me up. I'll just click on it and remove it. Now we have to do a couple of things to it. We have to change the duration of it and we have to do some panning and zooming. You have to do the pan and zoom first. So I'm going to click on the image and click on edit. And then we're going to do a pan and zoom. So what I want to do is focus on the vehicle. So I have to tighten it up. I'll take the node at the corner Tighten my image a little bit here, and we'll start this way. You notice you can always see very clearly what it's going to look like by looking in the upper right corner. And we'll move in a ways, and set another one. We'll click over here. Looks like we have to move back to keep it mostly in frame. That one looks OK. Not going to change it. If you want to add one anyway, you should simply click on the diamond with a plus. That adds a keyframe for position value. And now it looks like we're going to have to enlarge it a little bit. Make sure we don't go out of frame. 
and click over here. We have to add one this place. Click here a bit. And looks like I have to add it a bit because it's coming closer to my camera. And try to get near the last frame. And let's see how that works. If we just play this, see what it looks like. Okay, we're pretty much staying on the vehicle. That's good enough for now. So we'll click on OK. But the other thing we want to do is it's going to be a picture in picture. So I have to resize it. We're going to make it smaller. And put it here. But you notice it, it, it doesn't have the same angle as the background document does. So what we're going to do is click on the advanced on the edit. And we're going to take those same elements here. I'm going to drag the blue bar up and drag the blue bar down. And we're going to try to make this parallel so it looks like it's actually part of the document. So it's got the same proportions roughly as what we saw in the background. You have to eyeball this a bit, but it's not too hard, really. There we go. And that looks good. The next thing we have, to, I'm going to click on OK. And we'll play what we have so far. And that looks good, but it's too short. So clicking on it again, and this is where I have to change my uh, duration. So I click on the speed control. And I remember everything was 11 seconds. And I'll set it to 11 and 0. Press Enter. And now it fits. And now what we have is we have that superimposed on top of our background, both at approximately the same angle, same proportion. I see I could make it a little better over here. I'm not going to worry about that for the sake of the tutorial. But there's something else I want to do. I want to take this. I want the camera to go from left to right. Now, it's difficult to do that on both of these. I could pan and zoom both of these that way. But the easier thing I found is to take the entire image. I'll, I'll do my key to get my range key, which is default by X. I remap mine to R and drag the other one to the beginning. And then I'm going to export the range. It will basically simply produce it. And I'll give it a name. I'll call this uh, car on paper and press export. Click the export button. And we'll pause the video while it does that. Now that it's done, I'm going to click on open file location. And now I have it here. So what I want to do is I'm going to take and drag it and put it on the background. It looks like I have to move this off screen and close this window. Now I'll drag it back on. And now I have my car on paper. So what I want to do is take that and put it on the timeline. This will be what I'm going to use. Now I'm, now I'm going to take this and we're going to edit that. I'll click on the Edit button. And I'm going to go back to Video. And we're going to do our Pan and Zoom. And what I want to do is I want to take the camera and move it from left to right. So we're going to start out in the upper left. You can make this any size you want. I'll go near the end and set another keyframe. And we'll just slowly cause it to go down and to the right. Just a little bit of motion. So we have motion in two directions, which adds a nice feature. So we have moving from left to right while the vehicle is moving from right to left. And then a couple other things we'll do to kind of clean this up. To clean this up, I'm going to click on the X and close my panel. I'll go to Titles. I'm in my Custom Titles. I have a couple that I've used to set this up with. First one is called Auto something. I'll just type in the word Auto, press Enter. And here's my Auto title. And we'll take and apply that. In this case, it opens and closes because it's an animated title. 
I'm going to keep it open, so I'm going to make it so it doesn't close till after we're done. The second title is starts out with the letters MD. Just type that in. This is the bank where you can get your great loan. We'll put this on a new track and increase the duration. And then we're done with our titles. So I'm going to click back on Media and drag that down. I can put it on any track. I put it on track one. I noticed there was a little bit of a blank before we get to it. So I'm going to split it, do Control T, delete the left part and say yes, remove and fill gap. And let's see what happens when we shrink this down so you can see it maximized. That's the basics of how you can skew images, both background images and other images, and do picture-in-picture. Picture. We've covered a lot in this tutorial, but I hope it's been helpful. Mm -hmm.